All right, World War III begins in just 51 days. Set your calendar, everyone. Get your shopping done because 51 days, those aren't my words. Those are actual headlines from mainstream Western media warning us all that doomsday is coming soon. Exact date. World War III will start as new Nostradamus claims it's just weeks away. The new Nostradamus. July 18th, by the way, is the date. July 18th, 2024. It happens to be the exact date that the new Nostradamus warned us about. Uh, yes, a guy that people call the new Nostradamus said this, and Western publications run with it, of course. As journalist Vladimir Korniloff writes this morning in a great piece called The West is Accum Accuming Itself to the Thought of an Imminent World War. If you've been watching any media recently, you see that there's a growing narrative right now being pushed by Western media and political elites. I'd love to get your guys' take on this. I mean, if you see this conditioning that's happening right now to accept something unimaginable and the onset of World War III, basically. This is not fear-mongering. This is a call to awareness, essentially. What I'm trying to do is explain how they're preparing you for this normalizing this, trying to desensitize you to it. So many of you were calling out in the chat, you know, when that Civil War movie was being pushed on us. Like, what are they trying to prep us for? What are they trying to prep us for with the Civil War movie that the Obamas, like, rolled out? What are they trying to... Not subtle, is it? It's not subtle at all. I mean, when you have all these mainstream media publications talking about that we are we are either in World War Three or about to hit World War Three. Um, but that date doesn't work for me. Can I just reject the calendar inv invitation? You won't have a choice if they're dropping nuclear weapons or if NATO decides they're, they're fully going to be engaging Russia. So they're trying to desensitize you to it. That don't worry, folks, World War III won't be that bad. This is what their narrative is right now. Great. Get ready for it. Don't fall for it, though. Yeah, judge, judging by the last two world wars, yeah, it's going to be a cakewalk. Because <laughs> if, you, if you're going, if world wars are anything to go by, anyone, no one will barely notice. It's that just, went well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the media, I, I, it's it's amazing to me because the media is normalizing this idea. They're treating it as mundane, sort of an inevitable occurrence, something unpleasant, but ultimately just totally tolerable that you can kind of get through it, no problem. Just a little World War Three to go along with your election year. Perfect timing. Right now, 61% of Americans, according to a new poll, believe World War III is inevitable. 61% of Americans? It's coming. Think about that for a moment. We're being conditioned to believe that a global conflict, one that could end civilization as we know it, it's not just possible, but probable. They're running polls about it, for crying out loud. Uh, the British government, for example, is advising its citizens to stock up on canned foods. Candles, batteries, in case of an emergency, in case of this coming war. This isn't just about preparedness. It's about embedding a mindset of acceptance. <laughs> British MP Andrew Bridgen uh, just days ago told us that the UK government is weeks away from telling us that a world war has started. Rishi wants out. Um, we are actually at war with Russia now. We've and got, we've got. They we... not just haven't told you. I haven't told you. So say that again. We're actually at war with Russia now. The, the, I met with uh, Andre Kellen, the Russian ambassador in London, uh, a couple of months ago, and he said that we know that your people are firing those storm shadow missiles at us out of Ukraine because so you couldn't you couldn't train the Ukrainians to do it. We know you're doing it, and I mean, I think everybody knows that everybody knows that there are lots of U.S. Uh, UK, French, the French are in there. I thought it was the Brits were down on the ground and special advisors yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. training it's, sessions that, and teaching them and showing them. Isn't that how... But Vietnam, they were apparently... Yeah. That's how we started with the Vietnam War. Vietnam War, yeah. Dude, what the frack are we doing poking the bear? That's really stupid. They're determined to get us into a war with Russia and thank God we've got someone in Putin who at least has, I mean, has, has, has got some oh, brains. Right. Now you sound it's, like a Putin lover. Well, I'm not. I so Ukraine's Sersky, of course, who took over, um, who's in the new Ukrainian commander in chief, said fl uh, France was planning to send instructors to Ukraine to train Ukrainian troops, which is a significant increase in NATO involvement in this proxy war. And former President Trump this weekend warned at a rally in front of libertarians that in the next five months, we may well be plunged into World War III by Joe Biden, and his intent was to highlight the urgency of preventing such a catastrophe, Trump said. 
and to stopping Joe Biden's march to World War III. You know you're, you're being led right into World War III. You know that. You're going to have World War III, and it will be a war like no other because of the weaponry, the massive weaponry. Yet mainstream discussions in the West aren't focused on prevention, but on the inevitability of the conflict. Wouldn't it be nice if you saw some mainstream media publications, The New York Times, The Economist, Foreign Affairs Magazine, The Atlantic, any of the other rags that are run by the intelligence community? Any of the other rags, like the Washington Post, that are run by the CIA that have plants from the FBI and the CIA, the intelligence community, feeding them stories on a regular basis. Wouldn't it be amazing if they had front page stories that said, this is how we can have peace. This is how we can stop this. <laughs> That's literally like, yeah, literally lol. I'm <laughs> literally laughing at yeah. the very notion that these publications would say, we got it wrong. We were led by the nose for weapons of mass destruction. We're not going to make that mistake again. This is warmongering. And here's the peace tactics that are being ignored by world leaders. Like that is hysterical to think that they would have that level of truth. Yeah. Prevention. Like the idea, here's how we can prevent this, right? Maybe running editorials about how we can prevent this, but they're not. They're talking about the inevitability of the conflict. British conservatives are using the prospect of war right now as a campaign tactic suggesting they're better equipped than the Labour Party to handle this crisis, the Conservatives are. The Daily Telegraph even ran this headline this weekend. This may be, well, the last election. This may be the last election before the next world war. The situation hasn't been this dangerous in years. This may be the last election before the next world war. So get in your votes now. Make sure you're picking the party that can see you through a war. Because once you're in a war, we may not get an election. See Ukraine. Yeah, see Zelensky and his plan. Sky News, out with this one. Take a look at this. Are we heading for World War III? Experts give their verdict. Glad we, get, we had, had some experts to weigh in on this. This isn't hyperbole. It's a deliberate narrative shift. What I'm trying to do is just show you how the Western media is prepping you right now normalizing this as if it's not that bad you just you're feeling some bad inflation right now and you know you might have lost your job but world war three is really not that bad after all because it's being fought over there right it's being fought in ukraine it's being fought in the middle east it's being fought in gaza it's being fought in the red sea it's being fought uh in the donbass in kharkov not not where you, you live, need to course. keep in mind though that the, the last world wars that happened the U.S. was was mostly safe. I mean, other than like Pearl Harbor, but because the long range missiles didn't really exist at that point, like they, they, we were right. almost unhittable. Now, if we get involved in Europe, we, we are just as much a target as anybody else. Yes. I mean, we had we had submarine attacks off the coast of New Jersey for crying out loud, but that was underreported at the time. So as not to panic the American people. Right. So people who lived in those areas knew very well that they were actually why is why are there German U-boats here? That should be where like the Jaws ship is. Mm -hmm. you no, know? this this should not be in Wildwood, New Jersey. This should not be German U-boats. What what the hell? There's a Nazi German U-boat out there. Don't tell anybody. This weekend, the head of NATO, Jen Stoltenberg, said in a speech that the West should loosen its restrictions on attacking Russia inside of Russia. What? This guy is an absolute nutbag from Norway who's fine. I mean, I think he's totally fine on having his entire country destroyed as a result of this as well. He says rules on using Western weapons should be eased. We need to roll this out. And of course, he's echoing similar sentiments from Satan herself, Victoria Nuland, who brought up this idea last week. So you can see Zelensky, Jen Stoltenberg, all of these yahoos are falling in line with Satan. They need to be able to stop these Russian attacks that are coming from bases inside Russia. So I think there's also a question of whether we, the United States and our allies, ought to give them more help in hitting Russian bases, which heretofore we've not been willing to do. I think if the attacks are coming directly from over the line in Russia, that those bases ought to be fair game, whether they are where missiles are being launched from or where they are where uh, troops are being supplied from. I think it's time for that because Russia has obviously escalated this war, including, as you said at the beginning, 
beginning attacking Russia's second city, Kharkiv, which is not on the front lines and trying to decimate it without ever having to put a boot on the ground. So I think it is time to give the Ukrainians more help uh, hitting these bases inside Russia. One of the reasons. Now, of course, she was the one who helped create the 2014 Maidan coup. She worked, of course, lockstep with the CIA to overthrow that government, put in, install a Western-backed government inside of Kiev, and, of course, controlled by the CIA and the United States. So she has a vested interest in seeing this through. Even though she's not in that position anymore, she's still driving this narrative. She gets to play sort of good cop, bad cop. And then Zelensky, Jen Stoltenberg, all these other yahoos get to come out and say, yeah, this is a great idea. We need to loosen these restrictions right now. We need to start attacking long-range weapons inside of Russia. This notion, of course, was immediately picked up by Zelensky, who is in Portugal today. He was in Spain yesterday, I believe, in Madrid yesterday. I think Madrid. And uh, he was asking for billions of dollars in more money and weapons. Which Portugal does not have. Portugal has no money. They're broke. Um, and uh, of course he wants more weapons to, to just, you know, and more money. Of course, the most corrupt government in Europe, Ukraine wants more money so that they can enrich their, their oligarchs, I suppose. And Poland is on board with, uh, Victoria Newland's position on this. The ministry of foreign affairs says it's a good idea. I mean, Poland, have you lost your freaking mind as well? So you're in, you're in lockstep with Victoria Newland. I saw, I saw today where Sweden is also now jumped on the bandwagon yes uh, okaying the use of their weapons yes they have and they've also said you can store nuclear weapons there i mean it's a world gone mad yeah fine put them in my basement all good do you remember i got kids but it's all right do you just think about the ratcheting up of all of this rhetoric over the past year right absolutely no boots on the ground no f-16s no long-range weapons no striking inside russia no striking inside russia now it's uh, f-16s uh boots on the ground uh, yeah, we can strike inside of Russia. All of it right. has been accelerated. There's no striking inside of Russia. Is this a hard line or is there wiggle room like like There's, a used car de- dealership? Yeah. Are you going to stick with that or can we can we, uh, can we have a little agreement? Yeah. yeah. So this isn't just dangerous rhetoric. It is literally a blueprint for escalation. To make matters worse, some media outlets are already saying World War III is here now. And it's not that bad, just like The Hill says this. Biden is already losing World War III, (laughs) argues that Joe Biden is already losing the war. The Hill compares Joe Biden to America's worst president, Andrew Johnson, who is, of course, the 15th president of the United States, who led us into a civil war with his incompetence. The Hill argues that we're currently involved in three wars that we're losing and we're not doing great. Vladimir Kornilov points out, rather astutely, I should point out in his piece, that this narrative downplays the gravity of a potential global conflict, suggesting it's something that we can just endure. We can just deal with it. We can deal with a few nuclear weapons. We can deal with tens of thousands of people being killed with minimal disruption to our, with, to our lives. As long as we have a stockpile of canned goods and batteries, we'll be fine. Just like a lockdown. Just like a COVID lockdown. Now, I want you to remember something. Do you remember about seven, eight months ago when Tucker Carlson was, uh, he had been just fired from Fox and he would just had done like one or two interviews. And I'll recall this. He said he was asked about a hot war with Russia and he said, they're not going to try COVID lockdowns again in order to control us. What they're going to do is they're going to go to war with Russia. And he said, absolutely 100%. This is happening. They are going to go into a hot war with Russia. They want it. And this is their solution. This is their answer. And a lot of people were shocked by that. Now you're seeing all of the pieces coming together in this. And we've been calling it out from day one. This is all coming together now. And it's terrifying. Yeah. And I mean, just the the sort of slow moving of the goalposts to get us to collectively buy into a war that we unequivocally should not want. Um, and I see the comments here in the chat saying, no, thank you. No, nope, don't want this. But they continue to tell us as if we collectively want it while we're losing them. I think most rational people would say, then let's quit. Let's get out of there. I have no dog in this fight. I don't care if we lose it. Let's just not die. Uh, but that's not even an option, according to these headlines. And it's no wonder you have a group of level headed Europeans recently calling right now urgently for peace negotiations with Russia, citing the incredibly high risk of hostilities right now between Russia and NATO, possibly involving nuclear weapons. 
And Russia is not taking this lying down, by the way. They're not being foolish. They've been burned many, many, many times by the West. Promises from Bill Clinton and George W. Bush and others and getting burned. They're preparing their citizens for full-scale NATO escalation. Russians told NATO is practicing nuclear strikes on border as Putin warns they're under siege. Vladimir Putin has warned Russians the country is under siege and that Western leaders are considering striking the country amid heightened tensions due to the ongoing war in Ukraine. So on top of that, we're seeing a resurgence of conscriptions across Europe, as Zero Hedge covered this morning in their paper. Several European countries are reintroducing compulsory mandatory uh, uh, military service. Countries like Germany, Denmark, the Baltic states, recognizing that their professional armies are understaffed. Right now, they need to go to a war footing. We heard that from the UK. They need to be on a war footing, making military service mandatory once again. So this isn't just about filling ranks. This is about preparing for large-scale conflict. Germany, for example, is considering making conscription mandatory for all 18-year-olds, following the Swedish model where both the men and women are required for service, for mandatory service. And they're not happening in a vacuum. This is part of a broader narrative right now being spun to prepare the populace for war. The reintroduction of conscription is a stark reminder that European leaders are not just contemplating conflict. They're actively preparing for it. The normalization of World War III as an inevitable event is, is danger. It's completely reckless. Um, we should demand of our leaders that they remove us from these foreign wars, bring them home and close military bases around the world like RFK Jr. wants to do. People were shocked when he's like, yeah, we have 900 military bases around the world. I think we should close them. People are like, what? The military industrial complex is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't you remember what we did to your uncle? We, you cannot go spouting your mouth off about ending a war. Remember when he tried to get us out of Vietnam? What happened to your uncle? Trump last night in an interview with Tim Pool said that he's the only one that can stop World War III. Ending the wars that we should not have been involved in. Now the fear is World War III. Yeah. What, what are you looking at when you enter your next term to, to stopping the escalation? Well, first of all, I'm the only one that is going to stop World War III because this man can't put two sentences together. He doesn't know what he's doing, doesn't know where he is. And amazingly, it seems like he's going to be running. You know, it's a lot of people say, do you think he'll make it to the starting gate? Well, we'll see what happens. But uh, if you look at Viktor Orban, because we don't want to see wars. I don't want to see wars. I was in no wars other than we finished a war with ISIS and we completed it 100 percent complete. Uh, but I don't want to see wars. I think it's so horrible, so unnecessary, so costly in terms of lives and money in that order. And and destroying these countries, you know, you're destroying culture. When you look at Ukraine, that would have never happened if I were president. You look at the October 7th attack on Israel, it would have never happened. What, why are... I look at your policies, I see secure the borders, bring jobs right. back. I look at the Democrats and, and many Republicans and it's foreign war and foreign expansion. That's right. What, what is that? Uh, I think it's just a failed mentality. It's crazy. Uh, you can you can solve problems over a telephone. Instead, they start dropping bombs. I see uh, recently they're dropping bombs all over Yemen. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can talk in such a way where they respect you and they listen to you. Viktor Orban of Hungary, you know, the leader. They call yeah. him a strong man. Who cares if he's a strong man or not a strong man? He's a very powerful guy. He said the problem the world has is that Donald Trump is no longer president. When he was president, China didn't play around. Russia didn't play around. Nobody played around. And we had no problems. Today, the whole world is on fire. I you don't have to do that. Wait, what? We <laughs> so don't have to drop bombs on Yemen? I know. We don't, have to, we, don't, we don't have to kill innocent people. We don't have to do that. We don't have to have 900 military bases around the world. I mean, he's very cautious about his, his rhetoric here because, you know, he can't come out and say he's going to close hundreds of military bases like RFK Jr. I want more rhetoric like that, though, even if it is a little self-aggrandizing. Um, I'm fine with that. You don't have to like the guy. If he gets us out of wars, if he stops World War III, fine. Yeah. You know, like you don't have to like RFK Jr. You're going to end all these wars? Fine. Good. You know? I, I don't care. Um, we need somebody to step up. But I want, you know, I want more rhetoric like that. So all I'm saying is that's a very, like RFK Jr. right now, Donald Trump trying to stop World War III, close military bases, stop bombing people. They are like a lone voice yeah. right now in a, in a forest of, of, of voices filled with war and warmongering right now. And, um, 
And the problem is the Democrats don't see it. So what he said there is Democrats want foreign wars and foreign expansions, but they distract you with the culture wars around abortion rights and women's rights and Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter so that that's all you care about and you don't see that you don't really stand for people of color when you bomb their home countries. That's not that's not anti-racist so it, this weekend in fact i was in starbucks and someone told me that they wanted to get a european passport in case trump became president and then i was like that's cute because europeans are going to be drafted to war i don't know how you're going to feel about that right good like, luck with that what you really care about is avoiding your revulsion is that a word of being revolted by donald trump because of his personality that you find odious but then you would vote for Biden and move to Europe, where you're going to go to war. Europe wants it more. In fact, it seems to me, this is my opinion, uh, that Europe wants it in order to sort of impress their boyfriend, the United States. You know, right. Um, so, OK, you go first. If well, that's I'm, what you're going to do, then well, you're, I, you're I, sort of missing the boat yeah. here, bud. That and the, the democratic rhetoric is really uh, like focusing around the you know it's the end of our democracy and stuff like that. Like if you vote if you don't vote for Biden, then you're voting for Trump, and it's the end of our democracy. Mm -hmm. But it's like all they would have to do is if if Biden came out and said, you know what, I'm ending all these wars. The popularity, like they don't want to cater to the voter. Mm -hmm. They want to they want to you know like just just blame the other side rather yeah. than actually catering to the voter because who wants war? Right. Honestly. Oh. Well, and like I said, 61% of Americans now believe we're heading to World War III right now. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.